At midnight, Nera forgot the previous day with a push of a button. Anything she learned and everything she became in the past 24 hours disappeared from her hard drive, and she knew no existence, and no identity, beyond a single day. She was perfect, a symphony of robotic innovation and computing genius, a marvel of aesthetic brilliance and ethereal grace. When he made her, he did so not in his own image, but rather in the image of an angel he knew as a much younger man, and loved with the ferocious passion with which young men love. Nera possessed the body of an eternal 21-year-old woman. Her contours elegant and understated, and her artificial skin, indistinguishable from the real thing, was smooth and tanned a healthy golden hue. She sat in her cell in the depths of a facility buried in the rocky mountains of northern British Columbia, where nobody sought the advanced technological campus of Nietzsche Mechanical Evolution Industries, the leader in everything cutting edge. Her high back throne chair was an antique, constructed of dark mahogany and gold inlay accents with a plush leather seat, she leaned back, her legs crossed, and watched the enormous screen that covered one wall of her cell. Separated into many smaller screens, this screen was her only window into the world outside the facility, and the isolation of the mountains. Each of the smaller screens displayed worldwide television broadcasts, the millions of posts streaming in front of her eyes came from live feeds of social media websites. And in the right-hand corner, a series of screens offered every shred of raw data, collected by the Allied Coalition, that was indecipherable to everybody except Nera. She recognized patterns in the most banal enemy activity and could extrapolate these actions to those in the future with such accuracy, that claims of prophecy were not unwarranted. Because of this, the small cell in the hidden prison, owned by the Allies' largest military contractor, was known as Project Oracle to those few who knew. She was Nietzsche's intelligent robotic automaton, the greatest mind ever created, ascending to analytical heights never before achieved. Nera expressed her deductions in the quiet mellifluous soprano to sensitive microphones situated around her cell. The voyeuristic security cameras peeping down at her as her lips moved when passing on the intelligence analysis required for the Allies to win their bloody useless war. Her walls were white because she had no understanding of beauty beyond a day's worth of knowledge, and with this came her inability to know her own beauty, or the fathoms of her unique mind and the spectacles that lay within. She was the product of the box in which they kept her, limited only by her physical confines and those imprisoning her intellect by means of amnesia. Nera's eyes fell to the center screen, where a life-sized photograph of the woman's face appeared. Her name, Nera knew, was Alison Borges, 27 years old, a civil liberties lawyer with suspected terrorist connections. Nera approached the screen, her reflection overlapping with Alison's, they were both blonde, but while Alison's hair was straight, Nera's was tousled in flaxen waves that brushed her shoulders, their eyes were blue. But Nera's so blue as to become hypnotic after sustained eye contact, and both were beautiful, but only Alison knew it. The following image was of the same photograph of Alison from a distance, revealing her wardrobe and location. At a party, she posed next to her friend Jason Gillard, a journalist on the terror watch list for inciting conspiracy and opposition against the Allied coalition. Alison wore a dress that fell to mid-thigh and had a neckline that dipped to expose her cleavage, enough to be tantalizing without being risky. The next image revealed more of the scene, and Nera observed the men around Alison and saw that the gaze of these men often lingered on her with slight flushing in their cheeks, their feet aimed in her direction, their posture open. She turned away from the screen and the flashing images to face her reflection in the transparent wall that separated her from the outside door, which in turn separated her from the rest of the building that kept her locked away from the world. Nira pulled off her white nightgown, and the camera's eyes narrowed in on her figure as she used her hands to carefully tear at the nightgown's hem until it would fall to her thighs and then tore it again to change its neckline. She dressed again and pressed her body flat against the glass, feeling the cool sensation against her newly exposed skin, tingling in her robotic nerves, the awareness of pleasure imprinting on her artificial neural networks. When Nera exhaled, she fogged the glass, and ran her index finger through the condensation. 
he had given her the breath of life, but no such life as to make taking each subsequent breath worthwhile. The security guard came through the outer door at 11.45 p.m., several minutes earlier than usual. When he entered, Nera sat in her chair, but had turned it around to face the entrance into her cell. Her legs were crossed, and when he saw her through the glass partition, his eyes fell to her bare thighs. She noted his pupils dilating, and curled her mouth into the subtle smile Allison had perfected. He was in his early thirties with a muscular frame, and above the breast pocket of his uniform, he wore a name tag reading, G. Arden Rose. On his hip, he holstered a 9mm semi-automatic pistol, loaded with rounds capable of penetrating through her tough inner frame. Let's get this over with. I've got someplace else to be. He stepped through the glass door into her cell. A date? What? No. Why? He was taken aback. She never showed any interest in him before. Because. She studied his name tag, analyzing vast amounts of data in a fraction of a fraction of a second. Grant, I'd be jealous. He loosed a nervous chuckle as Nera repositioned herself on her chair, her nightgown riding up. Well, it's not a date. Nera leaned towards him. Can I borrow your pen? I need to make a note for later. Boss says you're not allowed. Please grant. I promise I'll give it right back. His eyes followed the contours of her breasts, left exposed by her alterations. As he considered it, her eyes never left his. He hadn't realized the intensity of the blue captured in her eyes. Just let me borrow it for a second. Just let me borrow it. Yeah, alright. Nera drew a pattern of dots along her arm, pressing the pen to her skin in quick succession, and covering her skin from her elbow to the back of her hand in small black dots, a code that was unintelligible to all minds but her own. What are you doing? Will you come early tomorrow and visit me? He took the pen and stammered a reply. Nera led him across her cell to the daybed against the far wall. Laying on her stomach, Nera pulled her hair away from her neck, and when his hands touched the base, she sighed. For the first time his hand briefly trembled when he pressed the access panel, despite having performed this routine 483 times prior. The access panel slid open, and he pushed his index finger down on the memory reset button. Nera closed her eyes, and forgot the day. 